Hello again, and today we'll be investigating plasmolysis of cells. So we're going to be testing how plasmolysis and different concentrations of a solution affects the cells of a red onion. So I have various concentrations of sucrose solution, starting from one molar to a 0.2 molar solution, and we also have distilled water. And what we'll be doing is placing pieces of the onion epidermal tissue inside the solutions and see how the cells react to that. Now there are three major types of solution that can affect the way the cell reacts. So the first is an isotonic solution which is where the cell has the same concentration of water inside the cell itself as the surrounding. Then there is a hypotonic solution where the concentration of water outside the cell is more than that inside the cell. So in that case, water will move inside the cell at a far greater rate than it moves out the cell. And then the final one is a hypertonic solution where the concentration of solute is higher outside than inside the cell. So in that case, the cell will lose water. And that is where we have plasmolysis. So we expect to see in some of these slides where the cell plasma membrane itself will shrink away from the cell wall due to water being lost from the cell. So to begin with, we just want to peel off some layers of the onion. Now red onion works best because it's already colored. So if you get to about this third or let's go to the third layer. And then if we break and tear. And start to get some of that epidermis separating. As I speed through the preparation of those tissue slides, I'm going to explain some key concepts. As we look at the structure of the cell, one of the most important parts when dealing with water potential is the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid layer that maintains the shape of the cell. Unlike the cytoplasm, does not change by expanding or contracting due to water potential. Now when looking at the formula for calculating water potential, um, one of the first things we notice is the pressure potential which is affected by the cell wall. So basically the pressure potential is how much water the cell could hold depending on the cell wall. So it's basically limited by the cell wall. Secondly, the solute potential is determined by the concentration of solute inside the solution which the cell is submerged in. So for example, using sucrose, the solution has a highly negative solute potential. Pure water itself would have a solute potential of zero. So as the concentration of the solute inside the solution increases, the solute potential decreases or becomes more negative as you can see in the table. With that in mind we can assume that as the concentration of the solution increases then the cell will retain less and less water so the water potential of the cell will decrease. Inside the cytoplasm of a cell there are already solutes dissolved which are important for the cell survival. Now these solutes also keep the concentration gradient so that water keeps moving inside the cell and this also is assisted by other processes such as transpiration and helps with the uptake of water through the roots. Now as the concentration of the solution that surrounds the cell increases, this forces water to move outside the cell. So water moves from the more positive concentration to the more negative concentration which would then be a higher solute potential at the outside of the cell. 
So we therefore define concentration of solution as being hypertonic or hypotonic depending on the amount of solute inside that solution. In ecology, we often tell students that a hypertonic solution, the R as in river, has less solute dissolved in it, so like pure water. And then the hypotonic solution, O for ocean, has more solute dissolved in it, so more like salt water. Okay, so after we've prepared all the pieces of epidermal tissue, I've already gone ahead and did the first three slides. What we're going to do, we're going to add three drops of each respective concentration solution to the tissue, add a cover slip, and let sit for 20 minutes. So these three have been going for about two minutes now. Let's begin the others. So that's the point six molar. The point eight molar. Now we leave those cells to submerge in solution for about 20 minutes and then we'll view them with the microscope using the pupil camera. We're then going to identify sections of about 50 cells. From those 50 cells, we're going to count how many of those cells were plasmalized. From that data collected, we're going to determine the percent plasmolysis and use it to create a graph comparing percent plasmolysis to the concentration of solution. From that graph, we can then determine the point of incipient plasmolysis. What you are now seeing on the screen is an attempt to focus a section of those slides for viewing under the microscope. Now what we want to get is a large cluster of those purple cells so that we can identify and count at least 50 cells. Now getting the purple cells to show up in itself is a task, as sometimes peeling the epidermal layer causes the cells to lose its purple color. A possible source of error might be that the onion itself was not fresh. Water potential in itself is also affected by temperature and humidity, and using an onion from my fridge might have affected the successfulness of this lab. The reason we use the red onion instead of adding a dye or a stain is because the dye in itself might affect the water potential of the cell. The dye might have in some solutes that would then cause water to move outside of the cell, causing plasmolysis in cases where it should not have. So what we're searching for are sections like this, where the purple color can be shown inside the cytoplasm of the cell, and we can clearly see where the cell membrane has shrunken away from the cell wall. Remember again, the cell wall maintains the shape of the cell. It's that rigid structure. Those are the dark lines that you see around. And then the plasma membrane just shrinks, and that's where you see the white color surrounding the purple. Now another error is that in some sections you might have double layers of tissue or damaged tissue where it makes it a bit hard to identify the cells like we have in this image here. If you look closely you can see one set of cells running up and down and then another set of cells running left to right in the background. Thank you.